Hi everyone, I'm Kyle. I'm here at the State Library of North Carolina to learn about some of the online resources available for conducting genealogy research. With me is Beth, a reference librarian here, who's going to tell us a little bit more. Hi Beth. Hi Kyle. Let's have a look at some of those resources. Beth, I know that you have plenty of resources here in the library for conducting genealogical research, but what about those people at home? I'm sure many of them would probably just start by Googling. Is that okay? It's perfectly fine to Google, but the thing is you'd be looking at potentially unrelated sites. It's best to go to a genealogical site, and I'm sure you've heard of Ancestry.com. That's certainly a good place to start. They do not actually own the information that is contained on their databases, but these are digitized in bulk and you can access them in local libraries or, or local history rooms. So if other institutions actually own these materials, why aren't they putting them online? Different libraries and institutions have varying degrees of resources, and that includes money and staffing, so that may vary quite a bit. Let's talk about the North Carolina Digital Collections. It's a joint effort between the State Archives and the State Library of North Carolina. They have thousands of photographs, manuscripts, state publications, and other types of materials related to North Carolina. Do all the materials in the digital collections actually pertain to genealogy? No, they do not, but let's look at some that do. For example, the family records online. They contain Bible records, and this is nearly 1,500 Bible records that list birth, marriage, death, and information for various donated family Bibles held by the State Archives of North Carolina. The State of North Carolina didn't officially record births and deaths until late 1913. So Bible records are often the only record of a person's birth before that date. Bible records may also be some of the only information about slaves and former slaves, so they are particularly important for conducting African American genealogy. It also includes digitized vertical files. These are digitized versions of those materials in the Government Heritage Library's genealogy vertical files that are free of copyright. These unique items include materials that can be very useful for family histories, such as family trees and pedigree charts. There are also marriage and death notices from five North Carolina newspapers. Selected genealogical books that are out of copyright that have been digitized from the library's collections. Photographs of the Raleigh Hebrew Cemetery and the Hebrew section of the historic Oakwood Cemetery. 1930s Works Progress Administration Cemetery Survey. When using this website, you can also browse by family name and you can browse by location using this list of, of counties and countries. The alien re registration and naturalization records include county records about the naturalization of foreign-born citizens. The records can include names, photographs, country of origin, the North Carolina county in which they were living, their profession, names of their children or other family members, sometimes more. War of 1812 pay vouchers. These vouchers give information on North Carolina ancestors who served as detached militia during the War of 1812. A few of the records were for people who furnished supplies to the Army. It includes about 5,000 pay vouchers for 31 counties with date of issue, soldier's name and rank, captain's name and county, and the amount paid. The public documents from 1831 to 1919 are a truly fascinating glimpse in early North Carolina. They compile executive and legislative documents. These include annual and biannual reports, budget documents, addresses of governors to the General Assembly, reports to state institutions, and special committees reports. These are produced for the year's session of the General Assembly. Why would genealogists be interested in searching these? Because there are lots of names in them. There are a list of teachers, catalogs of students, military officers. In some of the budgets, especially the earliest years, they're pensioners, electors, and others who receive money from the state. And pictured here is an excerpt from the 1844-1845 volume. There are also lists of students from early universities. For example, this from the 1881 public documents volume. A great many of these public documents have tables of contents, but none have indexes. You can full text search them in our collection these are a list of people who did business with the state government, 
they might be list of sheriffs, list of people who were transported into insane asylums, people who received governor's pardons, and soldiers. Other collections include reports of marriages and divorces, name changes, freeing of slaves. How do I know what's online and what's not? You can call or, or email an archives or library. You can also check and see if they have an online catalog. Why are some things digitized while others aren't? Many things are restricted by copyright. Most things that have been published before 1923 do not have restrictions on them and can be made available to the public. Time, staff, and funding are also very important factors. What we are doing is digitizing things that have not been digitized before and therefore we're stretching our dollars further. I have family in Ohio and also in Michigan. Uh, is there any way to search across digital collections from one institution to another? All of our digital material goes to the Digital Public Library of America. This allows you to search across collections from archives, museums, and libraries all over the country. You can search across content from libraries, archives, and museums, and other institutions across America. You can also link back to the original institution along with the actual resource. Do you have any other final thoughts about online resources? Yes, I do. Remember two things. First of all, not everything is digitized, and that you can always start locally and exhaust your, your local resources. But for those things that you cannot find online, remember that you can visit us for the unique things in our collection. Great. Thanks so much, Beth. Now you know a little bit more about the online resources available to you. I encourage you to look at those in your own state. Many things are restricted by copyright. Most things that have been published before 1923